Hey guys, how's it going? So in this video, which is another episode in the Boxing Fundamentals series, this is Boxing Fundamental episode 6, we're going to be talking about the triangle theory. Now we're not going to be talking about the triangle theory as is understood by most casual boxing fans and you know even real boxing fans who sometimes use this false theory. Boxer A beat B, so he's definitely going to beat C. That's foolishness. That's not, that's not what we're talking about. In this video, we're talking about the theory which basically dictates how to gain an advantageous position on an opponent where you can create punching opportunities from by taking the outside angle. In other words, we're going to be looking at the foundational theory as to why basically slipping a punch and countering is so effective. So that's really just what we're going to be talking about in a simplified form. Now, I want to stress that this is not something which fighters are thinking about in the ring, but something that is instinctive based on practice. Okay, so as we come to this image now, we're looking at the neutral setup of this foundational theory that I'm talking about called the triangle theory in boxing. There's many different forms. There's hex theories, there's diamond theories, there's so many other different theories. We're talking about the most basic one, which is the triangle theory. Now, when you look at this, you place yourself basically, if you take the point of reference of the red boxer in this image, you place yourself on any of the three points on an equilateral triangle. So therefore, and any point you stand on is going to be the exact same thing. And your opponent is always located in the center of the triangle. In other words, he's located in the middle. Now, if you flip the triangle from the blue boxer's point of reference, you see the exact same thing happens. Your opponent is always in the central, the center of the triangle, and you are always on any of the three points on the equilateral triangle. Now, this is the basis at which, within range with your opponent, you begin to deal with things like slipping and countering punches. And this is what this deals with. Okay, now we're talking about the outside angle. This is where you begin to talk about the usage of the triangle theory. Once you start to move along any of the sides of the triangle, provided you're able to keep your opponent in the center of your triangle, you always have the upper hand because you're attacking from an angle which is outside your opponent's immediate line of vision, and you can attack with both hands. Now, it's key to understand that the triangle theory only works when your opponent is throwing punches at you. It doesn't work when you're punching at your opponent, because then you're activating his own usage of the triangle theory, if that makes sense. So I don't want to get too complicated in this video, but the fact is what you're seeing with this image is the guy in blue shoots his jab and the guy in red slips the jab and is then stepping along the sides of the triangle. In the image, he's stepping to the right side of the triangle, but you could go to the left, you can go any which way you want to go. All right, now I feel that I just have to stress that this is a foundational theory in boxing. Okay, there is no fighter who is going to step in the ring and start thinking about you know equilateral triangles and how he's going to step on this side and step on that side. This is a foundational theory which explains some of the science of establishing angles in boxing. Okay, as you move along the sides of this triangle, as I as I illustrate this for you in the video, this is an easy way for you to conceptualize the establishing of angles in boxing. For being the best fighter in the Olympic Games, I mean this. For being the best fighter in the Olympic Games, I mean this. Okay, so hopefully the concept I'm trying to put forward is actually clear for you to see. You know, based on the depiction of this image right now, Lomachenko is actually on the tip of the equilateral triangle. He's not actually in the triangle. Um, his opponent, Opirio Pino, is the one who's supposed to be in the center of the triangle. So I do hope this is clear for you to see. Now, uh, we're going to see him slip this left hand and counter with his right hand. Now, you notice that as Lomachenko counters his opponent, his feet do not remain in a stationary position. He immediately begins to step his lead foot along the conceptual triangle that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. In other words, you see Lomachenko begin to establish an angle on his opponent. Lomachenko has a good understanding of this. Now, look at Lomachenko's position as he's completed this, this angle. You see how he's been able to pivot to the outside of Opirio Pino's lead shoulder. Now, we need to notice the words that are being used and the terminology. Lomachenko is outside the lead shoulder of his opponent. And thereby, you can say he's established an outside angle. And you saw he was defensively responsible as well. So now we're going to watch this in full. Now pay attention to that lead foot when he counters. See how he's immediately stepping along the conceptual triangle. Now we're going to watch it again. Once again, he a very subtle slip, slip from Lomachenko. He counters with his right hand. Look at that lead foot, how he begins to establish the angle. Round two of Vasily Lomachenko. Or Carson, California, where he fought Gary Russell Jr. Lomachenko. Those Matrix fighters, Roy. I always thought of you. The guy is going in slow motion from his point of view. It is from out. Not clash the head even as a... Not clash the head even as a... All right, so moving away from the triangle theory itself, 
as we know, those of us who actually watch boxing, and the reason I say that is because there's a number of people who, you know, claim to actually watch these fights, but but don't watch fights. You know, those of us who actually watch fights, we know that the use of angles is a key thing in boxing. So the without the conceptualization of the triangle theory, we can still see that it's always beneficial for you to attack an opponent from an angle as opposed to coming head on against your opponent. You know, this is something that is understood. Circling back to the right. Forcing Alperio Pino to try to time him with a body shot. Same way he hurt Gary Russell two or three times with body shots. Here he goes again, digging to the body. He snaps that right chip. He hits you hard with the left hand. I mean, it's incredible. Lands a million punches. One from Nonito Donaire, October 18, in Carterence Crawford fight in Omaha, Nebraska. And that happens with uh, opposite-handed fighters a lot. How else can you get to Camacho? You have to take chances. Good solid left four. And the right to left. So what we're looking at is Hector Camacho using a jab and a straight left hand to set his opponents on the ropes. Then you see him step over to the side and change the angle. Once again, a one-two. Then he's going to change the angle and try to continue the assault from the left. Now we look at Manny Pacquiao, straight left hand jab. What does he do? You see him take the side angle. Timothy Bradley's on the ropes. This is exactly like what you saw with Hector Camacho. And Pacquiao is simply able to just unleash his assault from the side angle and so Bradley's high guard defense is basically useless. So of course we had to take a look at Vasil Lomachenko, pound for pound, easily one of the best fighters in boxing today. Look how he uses head control, steps over, changes the angle, left hand to the body. Beautiful boxing. You know, I mean this guy just has all the talent. Now when you watch him against uh, Opir Opinion in this, in this situation right now, watch how he uses that lead hand. Watch how he occupies Opir Opinion with the lead hand sets up the straight left to the body and again he's immediately thinking change the angle changes the angle comes over with the left hand to the body of course you must remember when a guy shells up like Opirio Pino he can only defend himself from punches coming in a straight line see how Lomachenko just beautifully glides around the ring and just changes angles on his opponents look how he just consistently changes the angle straight left hand jab steps back he remembers that he's not paralyzed so he can actually use his feet Beautiful boxing. And again, consistently thinking about changing the angle. Occupies his opponent, control, change the angle, left hand to the body. I mean, watching Lomachenko is just, is just, a, it's just an amazing thing. And this is simply because of the way he utilizes his footwork in the ring, while at the same time being defensively responsible, but at the same time conscious of the fact that changing the angle on his opponent consistently gives him the upper hand. Lomachenko is really a perfect example of somebody who understands that you want to force your opponent to make positional adjustments in the ring and while he's making his opponents adjust their positioning Lomachenko is always punching alright so before I end this video I felt it was wise for me to clarify something which I said in the earlier parts of the video um, you may remember me saying that the triangle theory only works when your opponent is actually attacking you. It doesn't work when you're punching at your opponent. I just really need to clarify because I know that probably somebody's going to say something in the comment section. The triangle theory is a scholastic concept. In other words, it's dealing with scholarship. This is an entirely conceptual thing. So in, 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 in basically what I was saying, the, the disposition is that when you punch, speaking from a scholastic point of view, your opponent's triangle becomes activated because you have to understand that the triangle theory deals with slipping and countering the punch. So it is, in, it is impossible, speaking from a scholastic point of view, for your triangle to still exist when you're punching at your opponent because it is he who has the opportunity to actually utilize the triangle theory. Practically speaking, there is, of course, no such thing. Um, in a practical framework, like, like you can see on the screen, of course, you can punch and change the angle at the same time, which is exactly what you saw Pacquiao, Lomachenko, and the late, great Hector Camacho all doing in those video clips that I showed you. So I hope that clears up any possible confusion. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Please click the red button to subscribe so you don't miss any of my updates. Of course, you have previous videos you can click on the side panel to enjoy. There's also a more popular video which you might as well check out as well. Once again, please like, comment and subscribe and please share my videos. Thank you.
It's like I make friends about some Ray Bans or some cool shit. But now it's back to some killer shit. Got some wild hoes that'll drill a bitch. He has no limit, 30 years running, 30 years gunning, and we still a shit. I never run cause I stay to fight. I cook a nigga like sticking rice, and it's hella real in the battlefield.